ask him to stay. Hallelujah. Because he always holds us close. We want him to stay in our presence. don't want you to go cause my heart is burning on in your presence Lord please stay God I don't I don't want you
Where else would I go? Cause my heart is burning. My heart is burning.
me. In your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord. In your presence is where we want to be. In your presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord, in your presence.
try to get us back on the right track. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great. 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 How great is my God. How great. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Twenty-eight, verse one. I won't read everything, but to about fourteen. Deuteronomy twenty-eight, one to fourteen. Just write it down, and I'll be teaching my message today. It's like all of gladness. No, my message was singing, bless, 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 bless. I said, I didn't tell them my message. I didn't know bless. That's what we were teaching. I want to talk to you today how to activate a cycle of blessing. How? How to activate a cycle of blessing. I told the message last Sunday, we talked about how to wait on God. Secret of waiting on God. Then I let the church know there's a difference between waiting on God and delay. Because God does know what? Delay. When God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Amen. Unless there's a condition attached to the promise. But today I want to talk to you how when you learn this, you will stay in the cycle of blessing. All you'll be receiving is blessing from God. You will see in um, Deuteronomy 28, 1. Can we go there quick? Deuteronomy 28, 1. It says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. Obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully his commandment which I command you today. Amen. Which I command you today. That the Lord your God will set you high above the nation of the earth. If you obey the voice of the Lord. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And I learned this. The Lord said, all you have to do is to obey me. If you obey me, you don't need to look for blessing. You see, when you obey God, you activate the cycle of blessing. There are some folks, they're disobeying God, but they're doing seven-day prayer. Ain't going to work. It's okay to do seven-day prayer and seven-day fasting, but make sure you obey first. Amen. Obedience is one of the prerequisites of activating the blessings of God. I love it. You see, all these blessings will come upon you. Amen. I truly believe when you obey God, you cannot enter the cycle of delay. 
When you obey God, you yourself activate. You see, God don't curse us. We are the one that activate curse. No, God don't curse us. Because in the spirit realm, things are done based on principles and precepts. Everything in the spirit realm is already set. Are you hear what I'm saying? So we have to activate it. He said, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this month, starting this month, as you begin to obey God, you will activate the cycle of blessings. That the blessing of God will come upon you. The blessing of God will begin to chase you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I like the word. He said, it will come upon you first. Then it will overtake you. The blessing of God will come upon you. I said, the blessing of God will come upon you. If you obey God. As you obey God, the blessing of God will come upon you and overtake you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe that, shout amen. Come on, if you believe that, shout amen. If you have disobeyed, you can go back and obey. The church is quiet now. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Why? Why? Is that there? Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You obey the voice of the Lord your God. God. Let's go to verse 3 quick. Blessed shall you be in the city. And blessed shall you be in the country. And blessed shall you be in the village. And blessed shall you be even in the ghetto. Blessed. Because God is in the ghetto. God is in the village. God is everywhere. As long God is there, you will be blessed. Even in the village in Africa, God is there. God is going to bless you. In ghetto in America, God is going to bless you. No one can stop your blessing. No one can steal your blessing because you obey. Amen. The Lord bless me in the village. Hello? Because I obey God. Even in the hood. God bless me in the village in Africa. <laughs> Even some people in that country, they didn't receive the blessing. They say, how come God is blessing you like that? I told them, I obey. I'm serious. I went to the village. If you know where I went, I said, go village, village, village. Hello? Hi. Amen. You think the hood, the hood is nice. I went worse than the hood. I went in the village. Amen. In the bush. When the witches fly in the afternoon. Where they have a lot of witches. But because I obey the witches and the warlock, they cannot stop the blessings of God. Because the blessing is designed for me. If a blessing is designed for you, no witch, no wizard, no warlock, no babalawa, no obi man, no satan, no principality that can stop it because it's designed for you. Because I obey. So if the enemies is interrupting or intercepting your blessing, it's because you didn't obey 100%. I obey. They have a lot of witches there. I'm serious. They have territorial demons there. But because I obey, I went there. I said, territorial demons? I know this is your territory. I draw a mark. You see, over here, it belongs to me. Because I obey God, thou shalt not come here. 
you can operate over there or over there but here but here listen let me teach let me teach 99 percent obedience is total disobedience we have to obey god hundred percent come on somebody say hundred percent come on say one hundred percent look at this this is the word of god he said bless you shall be in the city joseph was blessed in the prison I'm blessed shall you be in the in the country. Go to verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Even because you obey, your children will be blessed. Your children will reap for the benefit of your obedience. He said, blessed shall the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and increase of your herds and increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock. Let's go to verse 5. Bless your basket. I prophesy over someone that your business is blessed. I prophesy that your home is blessed. I prophesy your job is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God wants to bless us in this dispensation. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to verse 6. It says, Bless shall you when you come in. And blessed shall you when you go out. So when you come in, you are blessed. When you go out, you are blessed. Everywhere you go, you are blessed. If you come to church, you are blessed. If you go to job, you are blessed. So remember, the blessing come upon you. It become part of you. Not only it come upon you, but overtake you. No, you didn't know what that means. Before you get there, you are already blessed. Because the blessing is going ahead of you. Oh God, you are a blessing carrier. Say, I am a blessing carrier. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Go to verse 7. Then I'll begin to teach. You know me, I would love to teach. The law, oh my God. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. You will see it. They shall come one way. Against you. And they shall flee. How many ways? I, I said, God, how can they flee seven ways? Huh? They will flee seven ways. They came one way. But they flee seven ways. I don't really believe the fire of God will come against them and they will be confused. Even they will forget where they came from and where they came to and begin to run everywhere. I declare in the name of Jesus that your enemy will come, that arise against you will be defeated before your face and they shall feel seven ways. I said, God, I said, no, God, I don't even care. If they feel seven way, I just want them to feel at least one way. <laughs> just go in Jesus' name. It's a blessing for your enemy to run away from you. Yeah. We're going to talk about blessing. What is blessing? Let's go to eight. I won't get to 14. But the blessing is up to 14. 15, please don't read it. Just obey. 15 is disobedience. Amen. Sometimes we activate it. Yeah. Obedience activates the blessings of God. It moves you to a cycle of what? Blessing. Look at it. The Lord will come and blessing on you in your storehouse. Yeah. 
and in all which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord has given you. Go tonight, quick. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he sworn to you, if you keep the commandment of the Lord your God and walk in his way. Question. And I'll begin to teach. Why does God want to give us all of this blessing? Why God wants us to activate his blessing? In Genesis 12, 20, 12 20, uh, 2, Genesis 12, 2, he said, I will make you a great nation. He spoke to Abraham. God said he's going to bless who? Abraham. Why would God want to bless Abraham? Why would God want to give us all this blessing? Because sometimes people don't understand the reason the blessing of God is coming to us. Yes, we know it's because we obey, but God is giving us for a specific reason. Specific reason. Why all this blessing? Amen? He told Abraham, I will bless you. And you will be a blessing. God is blessing us because he wants us to share our blessing. God wants to make us a conduit of blessing. A financier of the kingdom. Are you hear what I'm saying? Why? He wants us, number one. There are four ways to be blessed. Four ways to be a blessing to others. The reason why God wants to bless us. Big. I almost know this. If God is blessing you big, it's not only for you. If God, when God bless you, it's not only for you. God is looking for people that are generous and that will obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. God does not bless stingy people. Amen. Can I go there? Do you know why? He's looking for someone that have a heart of generosity. Because the blessing he releases is not for you to keep it to yourself. He's want to make you a blessing. For you to be a blessing to other people. Hallelujah. Come on, are you generous? How many generous people do I have in this house? God is looking for generous people. God is looking for a conduit that he will bless and you will be a, what? a blessing. That's why he wants to bless us big. If you are not a giver, I pray in the name of Jesus today you will be a giver. If, okay, few, amen. If you are not a tither, today you will be a tither. I will God bless somebody that don't tithe. I will God bless somebody that don't give. I will God bless somebody that don't help others. Why? God bless you because there are some people around you. For you to be a blessing. Say, I will be a blessing to others. I will be a blessing to others. First to my family. Second to my extended family. Also to the house of the Lord. And to others, I will be a blessing to them. There are four ways to be blessed, to be a blessing to others. Ha! Number one, serve others. Serve others. How many serving? How many serving others? I'm serving you right now. I'm your servants. You know what Jesus told the disciples? He said, whoever is going to be blessed first, to be great, you have to first of all be a servant. I'm sure that's what Jesus told the disciples. They were fighting about who's going to be great. Who's going to be the king? They don't understand the principle of becoming great. And the principle of becoming great for you have to serve others. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, whoever wants to be great, first of all, be a what? Servant. 
Let's go to Galatians 5.13. It tells us, it says, but through love, serve one another. He said, for you, brethren, having been called to liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. He said, but through love. Hallelujah. Through love, we have to serve others. Let's learn how to serve others if you want to be one. Great. Amen. When God bless you, first he wants you to serve. Number two, how we can be a blessing to others, share our testimony. Share our testimony. Let's go to Psalms 105 verse 1. He said, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Amen. We want to hear your testimony. Share your testimony with others. The testimony of God. Goodness. Don't keep it to yourself. Amen. God did a miracle for you not to keep it to yourself. See, this is the principle. Is the kingdom of God. It's different with the kingdom of this world. In the kingdom of God, the more you help others, the more God bless you. In the kingdom of God, the more you give, the more you receive. Some folks are not givers, but they want to be a receiver. It's not God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, the more you give. I have learned the more people I pray for, the more anointing I receive from God. I have learned that. Somebody say, oh, Pastor, you, you and Pastor Masha are not tired. Friday, we pray all night. You are with me. You are with me. We pray till almost 2 a.m. 11 time I was here in the morning. Hello? Amen. No, don't say wow for me. Don't say wow. I want more anointing. The more I pour out, the more I receive. The more I pray, the more I receive. The more I give, the more I receive. If I keep it to myself, God will not release a fresh anointing. I want the old anointing to go so I can receive the new anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's some folks they still carry the whole anointing. They are pregnant with the whole anointing. I want the fresh anointing. Because they are holding on to what God has given to them. That's the principle. Maybe we need to start teaching the principle of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of this world, that we are taught, that you hold on to it. You keep everything. All them is a spirit. Actually, it's a demon. Hold on. You hold on to it. Hold it. Keep it. It's not the principle of the kingdom of God. God to Abraham, I want to bless you. So you... God wants to bless us. So we can be a blessing. Are you hear what I'm saying? Also, our testimony. Telling what God has done in our life. How God bless us. What he do to others. He give the glory of God. He create the environment of miracle. Can I say that again? As we share. What God has done for us. As I share what God has done for me. What will happen, it will create, recreate. What it did for me, it will recreate the atmosphere of miracle. Yes. If I begin to share with you the greatness of God, the blessings of God, and how God has done it for me. What God will begin to do in the atmosphere, it will begin to do what? Recreate environment that I, others, their faith will begin to rise. And faith will create 
or recreate the environment of miracle. But when you hold on to yourself, it will not recreate that environment. In other words, when I share the blessings of God, it could be somebody else trusting God for that kind of blessings. Because I share my testimony, it recreates the same atmosphere of heaven that make it conducive for God to do the same miracle. Yes! Yes! That's why we allow on Fridays, people give testimony. There's something happen in the atmosphere. Because when that atmosphere is created, or when the testimony is being given, people's faith are increasing. In other words, if God did it for him, God can do it for me. As our faith increases, the environment or the atmosphere is recreated for that same miracle. And then what? God will repeat the same miracle for somebody else that is trusting God for it. But if you don't share it, people don't know. People don't know that you are sharing how God healed you miraculously. Some folks don't believe in healing. Some folks thought healing is only in the Bible. But if you tell them, no, God did this for you when? Yesterday. They won't believe it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Let me tell you what happened to, to me this morning. My wife and daughter will tell you. I got from the house. I got my briefcase. I opened the door. It was my fault. It's not devil. I was rushing. I opened the door with one, one hand. I threw my briefcase in the back of the car to remove my hand. At the same time, simultaneously, I shut the door. Very hard. I truly believe they saw my hand. I truly believe they say it's broken. My daughter said, oh, daddy, please go to, uh, what do you call it? Urgent care. I say, urgent care on a Sunday. I'm going to church. <laughs> because God is going to give me urgent healing. I mean, my hands actually stop. I don't even know which one. No, I'm serious. Let me tell you. I said, my hands were actually dead. The door closed. With my finger, this one, there. I don't know which one. I'm healed. No, I'm serious. I'm healed. Even during service, they were she was telling me, Daddy, that's your finger. Oh, I forgot that I injured myself. I mean, no pain. It's gone. You say, urgent care? On a Sunday morning, when I'm supposed to be here preaching the gospel, no, I go to no urgent care. You know, there's an urgent healing. I don't even remember. My, I press it. The door actually shut with my finger. I had to open it. And I was like, whoa, my God. Yeah, my God. Urgent care? That's faith. Honest, I'm healed. It's gone. It's gone. Even Pastor Manja told me, no, no, I agree with her. You, you need to go to all the care. Remember what happened to Abuja? That's you, and that's Abuja. This is America, and I'm going to church. And I'm serious. I didn't go to all the, all the care when I know my God can heal. I pray for people before God heal them. How come God heal me? So, as I begin to share that testimony of healing, the atmosphere of healing recreated for somebody here that needs healing to receive their healing. Hallelujah. Sometimes God do miracles for us to give testimony to others that our God is still healing power. Our God is a healer. Our God is a deliverer. It's a testimony that we have to share. Amen? Quick, let's move quick. Let's move quick. Number three. There are four reasons I'm giving you here. 
give with a cheerful heart. Amen. For ways to be a blessing to others. For ways to be a blessing to others. Serve others. Number two, share our testimony. Number three, give with, with a cheerful heart. Second Corinthians 9, 7. Second Corinthians 9, 7. So let each one as his purpose in his heart to give. You know that scripture. We should give with a cheerful heart. Not out of obligation. Not out of obligation. Give knowing you are contributing to expand the kingdom of God. Amen. When we give to the church, we are giving because we are contributing to the expansion of God's kingdom. And that's why God will return and give you more. Because the more he gives you, the more you will give. Number four, pray for others. Pray for others. Amen. How many people have you prayed for this week? Aha. Pray for others. Don't only come to receive prayer for yourself. Amen. Pray for others at work. Pray for others at home. Pray for others even in the church. Pray for somebody. A sister is going through, don't tell him to come to the pastor. You pray. Hello. Hi. A sister is going through, it's your sister in the law. Pray first. Amen. A brother is going through, pray. Hold their hands and pray for them. Amen. Some people tell me, well, I don't have healing anointing. How do you know you don't have it? If you don't pray for others, yes, it's not going to happen. Amen. You can have it and be carrying it for 10 years. Amen. How do you know? It's not only the pastor that got healing anointing. Some people in the congregation have healing anointing. You can pray for somebody. Don't send them to me. Pray for them first. Amen, Amen church? Amen. Pray for them. You will see when God starts Answering your prayer, people get here. You pray for others. Let me tell you a story. Oh, the story makes my message great. I won't tell you. It takes my time. But it's a good story. Years ago, I was supposed to go to India. You know, I always travel, go do open air crusade, healing crusade, deliverance crusade. I've been fasting for 40 days here in America to go to this crusade. The weekend before I go, God said, don't go to South Africa. No, don't go to India. Start going to South Africa. Guess what? I don't know nobody in South Africa. I didn't plan any crusade in South Africa. That time, I've never been to South Africa. I've already planned in India. Open air crusade. I've sent thousands of dollars to prepare a big crusade. That could have been the biggest crusade. God said, no, don't go there. Start going. To so where? South Africa. And it was specific. Not Johannesburg. Cape Town. At first, it's good to know God. At first, I want to start rebuking. Hey, that's the spirit of this session. I have prayed. So, I pray. I call other friends. We pray. I see you going this way, then you change. I'm going to South Africa. This is where I'm going. The pastor came here before, Pastor Edwin. He's my coordinator there. So I called him. I said, God told me <laughs> not to come for the crusade. He went up. That's the first time I've seen him talk to me like that. He went off. He said, Apostle, no. God cannot say that. <laughs> what do you mean God said do not come to, South Af to, to, to India? We prepared. You send money. We have the ties. It's your face on the flyer. It was going up and I'm going up and I'm going up. I let him finish going off. 
So I told him, oh, I like this message. Obey is better than sacrifice. Some of us are giving sacrifice instead of obeying God. I hear what I'm saying? I hear what I'm saying? Giving sacrifice. You know, so supposed to obey. He's doing what? Sacrifice. He was supposed to wait for Samuel. He's not have the grace and the anointing to do that sacrifice. It was supposed to be Samuel, the prophet. He didn't stay in his lane. God said, obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. So I told him, when he finished going up, I said, well, for me, I'm going to obey God. God said, don't go. Go a different direction. I said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But however, he was still going up. I said, stop. I had to rebuke him too. I said, stop. That's what I'm going to do. All your shouts are not going to change me. I'm not going to go. You, you will do the crusade. He said, we're not going to disappoint the people. You will do the crusade. Guess what? He went off again. I'm serious. He went off again. I said, what? I said, you. Because I'm not coming. So now I'm preparing you. You're going to go? Are you going to preach the gospel? To the people? He said, no, apostle, we can't do that. He said, because it's you they're expecting. Then I got him. I said, they were wrong to expect me. They should expect Jesus. And Jesus will heal them. Jesus will deliver them. Why do I get here? He did the crusade. He didn't know he had healing anointing. He didn't know that he had supernatural anointing. After the crusade, because I was not going, you better do it or nobody do it. So it will be your fault, not my fault. Because I'm obeying God. <laughs> because I'm obeying God. Listen to me, this man did the crusade. That crusade, God used that for him to discover what God has invested inside of him. So if you don't pray for others, how do you know you have the healing anointing? Pray for others. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your friends in the church. Pray for your co-worker. Pray for your children at home. If you don't work, then bring them. And it's going to work in Jesus' name. Pray for others. Now let me go to the meat of the prayer, uh, of the message. How do we activate a cycle of blessing? How many want to enter that cycle? How many want to activate that cycle? Because it's already there. God already set it. And the way to activate it, I will give you number one. Make God your number one priority. Make God your number one priority. Change your priority. Money is not your priority. Amen? House is not your priority. Even job is not your priority. New car is not your priority. Your profession is not your priority. Our number one priority is what? Is God. Put God first in your life. God should be number one. Amen. God should be number one. A lot of people, the reason why they don't obey God, some is because they don't know God. It's because they don't know God. Who is God? If you know God, you know nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Amen. The things that are impossible for man are possible for God. If you truly know God, he can do anything. He can change his law because of you. He can change his precept because of the children of Israel. He changed some things. He changed the law of nature. That's the God that we serve. 
It changed the law of nature. Water cannot become a wall. That's against nature. Moon and star cannot stop. That's against nature. Amen. No, that's the law of nature. God alter nature for his people. God can overthrow a president for his children. God can remove a king for his children. Amen. God can turn everything upside down for his people. That is the God that we serve. That God has not changed. That God is the same God. That God cannot change. The immutability of God. He changes now. What he did yesterday. He will do it again. Yes. 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 He will do it again. Amen. 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 He will do it again. Know who God is. He is the creator. He's a God that creates without using any substance. He creates from nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, let there be light. There was light. He said, let there be land. There was land. He called everything into existence. That's the same God we serve. He has not changed. His name is Jehovah. His name is Yahweh. He changes now. If you tell you something, obey him. If, oh God, oh God, oh God. It might not make sense. It might not make sense to you. If it makes sense to me, I will question it if it's God. If it makes sense, I will question it. If it makes sense, the first thing I say, Satan, you are a liar. It changes not. The same God today and tomorrow. Amen. It's knowing God. Knowing who God is. Having relationship with God. Spending time with God. Amen. Make God number one priority in your life. Matthew 6, 3 tells us. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be what? All this blessing will be what? And then we have to obey. It's part of obedience. We have to put God first. Amen. The reason for our struggle, maybe God is not first in our life. If God is first, we obey God. Everything will come into alignment. No, you did not hear me. I say everything. No exception. We come into what? Into alignment. I truly believe I broke. I don't know which trigger anymore. I broke it this morning. Is it my trigger? Eh? I don't know which one. Oh, the point that this one. Yeah, I don't even know. I didn't go to. Please go to Oje Care if you are not fully aware. Please go. Just leave Pastor Sam alone. You can go to the Oje Care. Is it because I don't know the level of your faith? I don't know the level of your faith. Please go to Oje Care. Go to the doctor. Take your medication. But leave me alone. Be because no, I have to tell you too. You have to do with what with the level of your faith. Amen. Me that years ago I had what they call it, blood palsy. My mom was doing what? Blood palsy. They call it. That's what they call it. I came. I was, I was preaching that day. The first thing before I begin to preach, I say, can you hear me? The old church said, yeah, we can hear you. As long as you can hear me, that cannot stop me. They said, go take 14 days. The, the doctor want to give me, they said they will give you uh, steroid. I questioned the doctor. Steroid? Because I know steroid, when you take steroid, you know, you start getting, as an athlete, I said, steroid? I said, doctor, why are you giving me steroid? He said, because if you don't take it, you will not be healed. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, well, you will take it for two weeks. I said, why two weeks? Because the first thing I asked him, what is the side effect? Hey, the doctor begins to this side. I said, no, the devil. <laughs> the devil. The devil is a liar. 
you begin to give me side effects. You know, if you take it, you will gain weight. Ah, if you take it, you will have a, 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 a diabetes. If you take it, I say, you know all of this, and you are telling me to take it. What calm me down? I'm still, no, no, I challenge them. I say, it's my doctor. I challenge them. I don't just take whatever you give me. I want to know. I challenge them. I say, why? I say, take it for 14 days. Then I challenge that too. I say, is it going to cause all of these things? Why 14 days? Then he pause. He said, I'll be back. They said, okay, this is what you do. Take it for only a day. Eight days. So take your medication. I'm not saying don't take, but leave me alone. It's your faith level. But that's why it's also good to share what? Testimony. If you change testimony and I'm speaking it out, what God would do, what I'm doing for God to do is to what? For God to recreate the atmosphere of miracle. The same miracle, you don't understand. The atmosphere has to be set. Are you hear what I'm saying? It has to be set. So you sharing your testimony is recreating the atmosphere of that same miracle that I've received. Anyone that has faith can walk, can tap into it and, and can receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I am a man of faith. Now, make God your number one priority. If our priority is to follow God, and build his kingdom, and everything will be added. Everything will be given. Amen. You will never lack. Listen to me today. If you support the kingdom of God, you make God your first priority, you will never lack. You cannot lack. It is impossible for you to lack. What is blessing? Let me give you this first. What is blessing? You cannot lack. You cannot support the kingdom of God and make God your number one and you are lacking. Maybe there's some area you are not obeying. Maybe you are not obeying in giving. Maybe you are not obeying in paying tithe. I heard what I'm saying. Yes. What is blessing? To be blessed means to empower someone to prosper in every area of their life against all odds. Please display on the screen. I believe I give it to you. What is blessing? It's on the screen. You can put it there. Oh, I didn't give it. To bless. Means. To empower someone. To prosper. In every area. And against. All. Odd. Checking media. It's on the screen. I gave it to you. Please post it. Because I want us to fully understand the word blessing. So if God is blessing you, not only money, not only in one area, God is blessing you all area of your life. Also your health. Blessing. Amen. Financially, he bless us. Spiritually, he bless us. Every area of our life, not only one area. Amen. And then the blessing, let me say this again. Okay, it's there. It's right there on the screen. To bless means to what? To empower someone to prosper. That means God will empower you to prosper. God will give you the grace to prosper. In every area of your life. Not one area. 
I mean, how good it is, God bless you financially, and you don't have good health to enjoy it. The devil is a liar. The blessing, God is blessing you, is not to use your money to buy, to buy what? Medicine all the time. How good is that? He bless you financially, but yet you don't have good health. That's not from God. You know what the Bible says? Above all things, I pray that you will prosper and what? And be in good health. Just as your soul prosper. See, God is after your soul. Before God give you financial prosperity, he will give you soul blessing. Because you are asking. Before you give him money, because of time we pray money, money, money. No, before you give him that, God will bless your soul. God is after your soul. God wants to make sure that your soul is renewed. When your soul is renewed, you have good health, hallelujah, to enjoy money. And there's some folk, they have so much money and they have so much disease. I know them. They are so sick. They are so sick. And they have so much money. So our question, is that God? Do they serve God? They are just chasing money. If God bless you, the first thing is do, he wants to make sure your soul is right. <laughs> he wants to make sure what? your soul is right. You know what he said in Psalm 103? I will satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth may be renewed day by day. Amen. You have this? To bless me, to empower someone, to prosper in every area of their life. Against all odds. God bless us to be what? Be a blessing to others. Therefore, we should share our blessings and not keep them to ourselves. Amen. Amen. If God bless you, make sure you bless me. Amen. Make sure you give me big seed. Amen. Amen. And God is going to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number two. Let's do this quick. My time is up. And I will stop. We take offering. That's number one. Make. Number two. Pray to receive spirit of wisdom. Please. Say spirit of wisdom. Pray when you pray. Put it in your prayer point. Spirit of wisdom. Ephesians 1 17, you know what it says? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a what? A spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Spirit of wisdom is not man's wisdom. Spirit of wisdom is divine wisdom. Spirit of wisdom is coming from God. In the world that we, we are in right now, everything is so messed up. If you use the wisdom of man, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So we need what? We need the wisdom of God. If you want to prosper, if you want to do anything you're doing for your business, for your family, ask God for wisdom. Amen. Amen. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of man won't take us too far. Spirit of man is limited. But spirit of God is unlimited. I'm going to tap into the wisdom of God. Amen. What is wisdom of God? Even the Bible tells us, James 1.5. If any man lacks what? Wisdom. Let him what? Ask. Wisdom of God. Wisdom of man will not take you far. Man, wisdom is limited, but we can ask God to give us wisdom just as he gave it to Solomon. He just said, it's just that Solomon corrupted his own wisdom. Ouch. 
Solomon did what? He had wisdom. But he corrupted that wisdom. Why? He disobeyed God. You know it. I won't get to all of that. He disobeyed God. Begin to disobey God. What God told him not to do, he begins to do it. You know, right? I want to tell you. You know it. Amen. We need divine wisdom. Why do we need divine wisdom? I have to teach this. We need divine wisdom to know what to do. Most people don't know what, what to do. We need divine wisdom. What to do to make you prosper. Amen. Some people went to school to be a lawyer. Or some went to school to be a doctor. Is that divine? You are led by God? Some people went to school to be a what? A nurse. Does that come through divine wisdom? I don't know. I'm asking. Years ago, we used to own a business called Compassionate Care. It's home health agency. So we hire RN, LPN, geriatric care, you know. It's an agency, then we send them out. We used to have the office in Bowie, Laurel, uh, Laurel Bowie Road there. That's intersection 450 and 197, right there. They call it Bowie Blade. You guys will know it. it used to be Bowie Blade building. Our four offices on top, right there for many years, you know. Do home health agency. So I told you, told you very well. But one thing I noticed. When people come from the West Indies, Jamaica, Trinidad, and the West Indies, and when people come from Africa, except Nigeria, Ghana, everybody come to be a nurse. Man, our office is going to be full. But when you're full, you don't see, even see African American. Maybe the RN, LPN, you will see them. But geriatric care from Jamaica, especially Jamaica. Some of them have three jobs. Everybody doing nothing. So one day I said to myself, God, do you call everybody to be a nurse? <laughs> do you know what they're doing there? Especially from Africa. Money. Because those days, it was easy to get a job. So everybody come. So they were driven by what? Money. But not driven by spirit of wisdom. All of us don't have to be a nurse. You need a pastor like me. What am I saying? Don't do what everybody is doing. If you don't know, what you need to do is to ask God for what? Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom will tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. What to do, when to do, and how to do it. Are you with me? When you have spirit of wisdom. Now, Psalm 11, let me move quick. Psalm 11. 118.8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. To put confidence in man. Let me ask you, what are you called to do? If you don't know, ask God to give you spirit of what? Spirit of wisdom. And if you know when to do it and how to do. Our trust should be in the Lord. Let's go to the last one. Number three, it's only three things. And it was, live a life of obedience to God. Live a what? Obedience to God. Genesis twenty two eighteen. 18. He said, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed. Stop, but let me explain what happened here. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Who is this? Abraham. Okay, very good. Abraham. The God of one man obedience. Obedience. What 
did he do? What did God ask him to do? How do I get my life to stop? What did God ask him to do? God, you know what God asked him to do? God told him to take his son. told him to take his what? His son. But when you read that scripture, he said, your only son. Because of one man obedience. One man. He said, your seed. All the nations of the earth will be blessed because of one obedience. That's why we need to be careful what we do. Our obedience, our children can reap for our own obedience. Because we obey God. He took his son. Because God was testing him. You remember number one? What is number one? Say that, number one. God was testing him. To see if by his priority have changed. Want to see if his priority has changed. He wants to know if his priority now is Isaac and not God, the giver of Isaac. And God told him, take that boy and go sacrifice him. Our God is not mean. God was just testing him. He said, do you understand the depth of this scripture? What he was saying here, really, God was telling him, because you gave your son, I will give myself. I don't know, you didn't get it. He said, because you gave your what? Your son. You gave Isaac. Guess what I'm going to do? give my own son because you obey me. I will give my own son and through your seed. He's talking about Jesus. He said through Jesus, every nation of the earth will be blessed because he obeyed and gave his own son. That's what he was saying. All the nation. It was because of that obedience. That's why I'm here preaching. That's why they are here singing. That's why we are here sitting and praising God. Because of Abraham obedience. Let me tell you this. Anna. Do you know the same place he went to sacrifice his son? It was the same place Jesus was crucified. The same place. The same place. You gave your son in Golgotha, Mount Mariah. I will give my son in Golgotha, formerly Mount Raya. I studied this years back and I said, how come God told Abraham to go that far? How come? When I study, I found that a, there were a lot of mountains close to Abraham. So how come you didn't go to this mountain and go to that mountain? Sometimes God will tell you to live, you live in a Washington, D.C. And God will tell you to pass all the churches in Washington, D.C. And come all the way to everlasting life, Christian Center in Colombia. I hear them saying, Oh, you live in Bowie. There's a lot of churches that you pass on your way. I say, What's saying? Our God is purposeful. God won't tell you to come here for nothing, God won't tell you to pass all those churches for nothing. There's a special blessing for you here. There's a special. Are you hear what I'm saying? There's a purpose. There's a purpose. 
Years ago, Pastor Reggie used to go all the way to Washington, D.C. But God changed that. He said, come all the way to Everlasting Life Christian Center. And you hear what I'm saying? Even this woman lives so far, but every Sunday you're going to come all the way. There's a purpose for you here. You have to pass all these touches. It's not for nothing. It's for a great purpose. If God don't have purpose, he won't tell you to come here. He won't tell you to go here. You have to obey. When you obey God, he's going to bless you. Somebody say, yeah. Somebody say, obedience is better than sacrifice. Some people say, well, I don't have to go all the way over here. The church is next door to me. Next block is right there. But what God wants for you, he can give you there. But he wants you to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If you want to enter the cycle of blessing, number one, may God Number two. Number three. I do have to say, can I continue next week? You know, wisdom requires. What is wisdom? The leader should know that. Did that. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Correct. Come on, church, say that. Say correct. Correct. Application of knowledge. You are applying the knowledge that you have correctly. Right? That's knowledge. That's wisdom, right? But divine wisdom, the knowledge is not coming from you. The application coming from you to obey. The understanding not from you, from God. What do I mean? Wisdom, divine wisdom is already processed by God. Why a lot of people don't obey? Oh, God help us. Why a lot of people don't obey? God give you a word to do something. But you are trying to get understanding. And questioning, why should I do that? When God gives you, it's already processed by God. All you need to do, be quiet. I won't tell you to shut up. But I just said it. I won't tell you to shut up. But be quiet, that's more polite, right? Be quiet, it's more polite. Or oh, shut up, just say it anyway. And obey. Then later, after you obey, ask questions. When God tells something, it's already processed. But man wisdom is processed by understanding based on the knowledge that they have. Why God wisdom is better? Oh God. We have limited knowledge. But we serve a God that knows all things. It's based on this knowledge. It's based on what God knows. Not about our education. It's knowledge. He knows everything. Based on his knowledge, he gives you a word. Is already process. People don't know that. But why I should do this? That's why when I called that pastor, God told me it's already process. I don't need to ask God. I lost money. I sent money there. They can keep the money and do the work of God. I'm going a different direction. God, there's a reason why I should not go there. Year pass, I found out why. Most people will stay there and be asking question, why, Lord? I obey. Years later, I find out why. One of the place are supposed to be preaching, they're doing, they having an Hindu sacrifice, a very big Hindu sacrifice in that land. It's very easy to see me and know that I'm not an Indian man. I don't look Indian. 
a lot of people who are killed during that time. A lot of churches were burned during that time. But we serve a God. He knew that. And told me not to go. I didn't question him. I obeyed. But later, I find out why. I said, oh, thank God I didn't go there. Because they were doing this big sacrifice to kill him. Even him, Apostle, he didn't go there. They did just one kill. After they found out. But God knew before time. Say, obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, somebody give God praise and offering. Come on, somebody give God praise and glory. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Come on, let's exalt the name of the Lord. Come on, let's give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, you follow that step. God number one. God number one priority. Two, wisdom. Obedience. Amen. Amen. His blessing will come upon you and the blessing will overshadow you. Yes, indeed. In indeed. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, this this is just, just, wow. Wow, powerful. That's the word, powerful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise my, praise the Lord. My God. And, and, and the amazing thing is, um, there's someone that texts me instances where the Lord spoke to her through me, and she disobeyed, and she suffered the consequences of disobedience. Disobedience, but she says, no more. Amen. There's consequences. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So in order to release a continuous flow, obey. Amen. Can we stand up and give Jesus a hand? Can we stand to our feet? And give King Jesus a hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is even telling me that there's some some people here is my God is by his mercies, my God, why you're still even alive. Because you disobeyed, he says you should have died. But God says, I kept you. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. But thank God. Thank God. Glory to God. That they've seen the hand of God. And now they're saying, I'm staying on track no matter what. I'm staying on the path no matter what. Oh my God, my God. I am staying in my, I'm staying where I need to be no matter what. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but there is consequences. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Let's give King Jesus a hand. Glory to God. If you want to unleash, release. My God, constant flow. Constant, 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 constant. Amen? Oh, I like that one. I'm blessed in the city. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Praise God. It's time to give back. Amen. Amen. I hear nobody say amen. It's time to give back. Glory to God. We have it right here. So we, we make it easy. Back in the day, you make sure you go get your offering and put it in your pocket and make sure you have it. Anybody remember back in the day? You got to go get it and make sure you have Amen. So technology make it so easy. So all you got to do. Glory to God, you could go on a, a Cash App, you could go on Zelle, you could go on PayPal, glory to God, amen. And if you say, you know what, uh, uh, you're watching from out there, and you say, you know what, I'm from the old days, so I can't not do none of that, you can even call. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. So these are the ways to give. Um, um, I'm just going to say a word of prayer, Father God, I thank you. I thank you, God, saying thank you sometimes is just not enough. Uh, but I thank you, God, my God, for the, cheer, for the faithful givers. My God, for the ones that continue to remain cheerful, my God. When they give, the ones, my God, that says, uh, no matter what, I'm giving you my twenth, the, the, my tenth, the sweat of my br brow. My God, if that's all I can give you, that's what I will give you, my God. Oh, hallelujah, the faithful ones. My God, that is still giving to the various ministries. Uh, my God, including uh, 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 the building fund, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. 
Father, we thank you. Father, as you're about, my God, to do this, we ask, my God, for an exponential blessing upon them. Uh, and, uh, Father, increase them a thousandfold in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may follow the direction of Sister Julia.
drum, start with the drum. Give me some, give me some. change lives today. Amen. 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 That's what I heard. So, expect your blessing. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow, awesome. Can we stand as we pray and release? Amen. Change lives. Amen. You have to obey God. God number one. Amen. Ask for spirit of wisdom so that we don't do the wrong thing. Because sometimes you can have the right thing and do it the wrong time. Mm. Yeah, we are human. We, we are bound to make mistake. But God does not make mistake. That's the God that we serve. Amen. I use that in my life. I apply it in my life. That's what I do. I move by the spirit. Amen. I don't allow money to move me. The Holy Spirit. And I pray in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. That the spirit of wisdom will be given to you in the name of Jesus. As you put God first in your life. God will give you spirit of wisdom. Because the Bible makes us understand that even Jesus possessed spirit of wisdom. Isaiah prophesied that then when he come, that the spirit of God will be upon him. That the spirit of wisdom will be upon him. That the spirit of understanding will be upon him. That the spirit of knowledge will be upon him. That the spirit of mind will be upon him. That the spirit of counsel will be upon him. 
and the spirit of the knowledge of God will be upon him. So I pray that over you today. Because the spirit of the Lord is upon you, God will give you spirit of wisdom. Oh, come on, someone shout out like amen. Come on, someone shout out loud, amen. I, I pray, yes, that spirit of wisdom will be upon you. God will increase spirit of wisdom in your life. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of knowledge. Spirit of counsel. Spirit of the fear of God. Spirit of might. Because you will do mighty things in your life. It takes an anointing of God to do mighty things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as they put you forth, you will give them those seven spirits of God that was upon Jesus. That's why Jesus did great things. Because your spirit was there. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Even as we obey you, as they obey, we will activate a cycle of blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Now let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let the rest, let it abide with us now and forevermore. And the church shall. Yes, 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 yes. yes.